We get dirty. And the world stays clean. That's the mission. You can't know war unless you have fought our open elbow in some shit bog full of traps. For modern warfare, expectations are so high that coming in and reimagining it from the top to the bottom is humbling to say the least. I'm Taylor Kurosaki, the studio narrative director at Infinity Ward. Now it's my job to make sure this game is everything the fans expect and hopefully a lot more. Today, I have an opportunity to sit down and chat with someone who has a similar challenge and responsibility, and that is Barry Sloan, the guy that's bringing to life one of the most beloved characters in the Call of Duty series. Thanks for being here. Of course, mate. It's a pleasure. What was it like for you to be put into this role, and how does that relate to your experiences of playing Call of Duty in the past? I was very drawn from, from Call of Duty 4, the first Modern Warfare one that came out. I had that as part of my upbringing, my, my, my childhood, and then to become him um, has been just an incredible experience. I knew that if we found a guy who could exude what I think we all have in our collective memory of a guy that is Price, yeah. the, the ceiling would be way higher. And I think that's what we got with you. And I, I, obviously I wasn't aware because you weren't saying it, it was Captain Price, you were just saying, I can't remember the name on the audition, but it was... It was Commander it was, it was, Sykes. Yeah. I knew in that moment, I felt like, okay, this is the guy. This is our Price. I wanted to be able to drop your voice into a real thing that we were working on. Okay. And so I couldn't have you say, <laughs> Under my command, exactly, yeah. Commander Sykes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I crossed out Commander Sykes, and I probably shouldn't have done this. It's probably a total breach of protocol uh, and it, whatever. Yeah. But I was—I just wanted to hear your voice saying those words. Yeah. So I crossed it out, yeah. and I wrote under my command, Captain John, John Price. Price. Yeah. And I do remember saying, oh, "That's a name drop." Right <laughs> there, that second, I was like, "Okay, here we go." Under my command. Captain John Price, you will have full execute authority. One of the most exciting things for me is the is the collaborative nature of what it takes to make this. Yeah. And how many people are responsible for the performance. And I remember speaking to Mitch, who's our um, our, our technical advisor who I'd worked with before, and he said, you know, no one man can play Price. It takes an army, and it's very much that, and it has been from day one. You know, I'm the first guy to ever get to physically move him. So I had to find a way to make this guy real and, and believable. And, and a guy for, who can work in a 2019 scenario. Above all else, he is a protector and he is a guide. But I wanted to make sure that in every scene I'm checking in on the person that I'm with. But I tried to make this price be someone who you would aspire to be. But it's not over yet. Trust me. I always have. For you, I mean, you've got not just one character's work to worry about. You have the entire franchise on sure. your shoulders. How did you feel about having to take that on? Our goal was to make a game that gave all those feelings that we've had playing the original series, because we have to not just exceed the expectations of what those other games were, we have to exceed the expectations of what your memories were of playing those games. Nostalgia is a tough battle. <laughs> yeah. We didn't want it to just be another one. We didn't want it to just be, eh, it's close enough to the original games. A bunch of the original guys that made Modern Warfare heard that we were working on it, and they were like, I want to be part of that. So we got a new in an infusion of the original blood, and so I think we were prepared to take on this this huge undertaking and this huge honor. As someone who who is a fan of gaming, who plays, although I'm filming it, I'm still not part of the process of making them. You've taken what was the acceptable level in this genre and put it somewhere that people are now going to have to try and get close to, because it's blown my mind what I've seen. I didn't expect it to look as incredible as it does. It's, it's really, really special. When can you breathe? We just did. So let's talk about embodying the man. Yeah. Right, being on the PCAP stage. Mm -hmm. Making a, a TV show or a film versus making a game and what that experience means to you. There's much more parallels to theater and video game 
because you're being asked to dispel belief in a, in a similar way. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like you, you know you're going into a make-believe world quite clearly, you're separated from it, but your brain allows you to believe aspects are real. You can almost touch it these days with the way video games look. And so that aspect of bringing your audience to you is it feels like theatre to me in that sense as well. And certainly the way we film it, because, you know, when you're on a film set or a TV set, you know, you know, you know, like now I can look at the camera, I can speak to the operator and I can know, okay, this is probably a tight shot. Hopefully I'm getting it right somewhere around here to about here. I know I've got about this much space and then my frame cuts off. So I can manage my shot or my performance for that particular shot. But when we shoot PCAP, we have the whole room. Yeah. And I don't know what point you're going to come in for the close-up of pricing here or when, when you're going to need to be super wide to get the, 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 the feel of the scenes. You have to be on the whole time. You have to know the man or the woman that you're playing and be in there locked in the whole time because it could be on you when you don't expect it. Like Jeff will be there with the camera making the shots, but that's not necessarily the shot. You can't play to that camera because it's not there. So it's like you have to just let him direct you through but not react to the camera being there. We're all just pawns in this. You speak for yourself. Talk about the training you went through with Mitch. It was tough, man. Mitch and Steve, they both served in the SEAL teams. And their way of educating actors is to literally drop you into the most realistic version that is possible. A lot of my technique is from him. Like, just in general, my shooting technique, my, my the way I clean rooms, come from his techniques. Get down on the fucking floor now! Get down! Get down on the fucking floor! Stay there! I mean, the, the, the war genre in general, it's a source of pressure yeah. for characters, right? You know this better than anyone, that, that pressure oh. <laughs> reveals character. Mm -hmm. And that's what we try to put our, our characters under, is under yeah. pressure so that they're forced to evolve. They're forced to overcome that obstacle and get out of their comfort zone. And so for us as creators to work in that genre, that's part of making Call of Duty, and to not only empathize with characters who are put under pressure and have to reveal their, their true nature and to be forced to make those kinds of choices and to do the thing that Mitch and Steve and those guys always say, which is to operate perfectly in an imperfect situation. But now you go here, here's the controller. Yeah, now you try. Good luck. Yeah. It's been an honor working with you, man. And uh, I hope we get to keep working together in the future. That's it, mate, absolutely. Yeah. Where do we draw the line, sir? You draw the line wherever you need it, Sergeant. XRK Weapons Pack.